past the age of four. But God, <laughs> even when you don't know a lot, all you need to know is God is good and cry out to him. And when I was even 12 years old, I was so sick. The doctors told my mom I had a week to live and they were planning my funeral. But God, I didn't know him like I know him today. I just knew there was a God and I cried out to him in that ICU room and I remember peace coming over me and I remember taking a, a breath, a sigh of relief and I just remember feeling like everything was going to be okay. And from that moment I began to amend. I spent three months in the hospital and then I went into the world. I forgot the goodness of God because it's... we. We taste and see that the Lord is good, but you have to hold on to it, and it has to be real. God can do miracles, just like Jesus said, um, if someone was raised from the dead, it, it wouldn't change them. They need to believe the prophets. They need to believe the word. And so the word wasn't in me, so I forgot God, even though he raised me from my deathbed at, at 12 years old. But at 19 years old, I went to an amazing church. My mom kept inviting me. And they were preaching on being bold for Jesus. And I rededicated my life to Jesus at 19 years old. It was a big church like this. And I was one of the only people that went up. And I just bowed at the altar. And I remember the fire of God coming on me and washed me as white as snow. <laughs> And I remember a heart coming into me for the lost. I remember the church took me out to the homeless people and we gave them hot chocolates. And I just had a heart for people that, that didn't have a church that weren't going to heaven. And this homeless guy invited me to this church down the street where the prostitutes were. And I went because at the time me and Robert were dating. And and um, I went there to meet the homeless man, hopefully that he'd get hooked up in the church. But it, it was a divine appointment for me because I learned about healing. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. I thought it was too good to be true. I'm like, doctor said I won't live past the age of 30. I didn't think I'd live much longer. I, I did the world thing, but it was old. I got old. When you're told you're going to die... You figure out really quick, what is life really about? And so I, I heard the message of healing, and I began to dig in the word like no other. I used to have to do three hours a day of physio. Like you saw when they, the, they were shaking my chest, trying to get the mucus out, because it was thick as honey. And so many times people don't understand, but diseases of the devil... Jesus said, the thief comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. But Jesus came to give us life and life abundantly. And so I would do my physio and, my, and, and cough out mucus and blood. And it was diseases from the pit of hell. But I would put the word in. So three hours a day, I would be listening to sermons, to the Bible, to the audio Bible, to anointed worship and I put it in and it was working mightily in me I don't just want to share a testimony to inspire you but I want to inspire you to action because God's no respecter of persons and what he's done for one he'll do for another if you do what they did apply those principles not religiously but in a relationship in literally like that Jesus is a lifeline he was my lifeline because there was no hope in the natural. So I put the word in over and over and renewed my mind. I think that's key. Don't be transformed but, or don't be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so I just would listen to the word on faith and victory and Jesus' love for me. And I would thank him and praise him like Tom was saying, thanking him before you see the mountain move and speaking to the mountain. I wouldn't wait for other people to pray, but I would speak to the mountain because Jesus said, 
don't pray to me about the mountain or talk to me about the mountain, but he said, speak to the mountain and the mountain will move if you don't doubt in your heart. So for 14 years, I began to just apply the word and speak and just believe God that my lungs that were deteriorating in the natural, um, I was just believing that I would live and not die and declare the works of God. <laughs> so um, when your lung function gets to about 30%, the doctors start talking to you about lung transplant. And it was the biggest fear of my life. I was afraid of it. And I just had to seek God. And I just felt like God was like, what's in your hand? Moses had a staff. What's in your hand? And I'm a good father and I'll go before you. I'll make a way. I'm not just, I, would, I remember talking to Todd and as I was going to the transplant, and I was like, I told him, God's on my side. And he's like, and God's in you. And it was like words of faith that just caused my faith to arise. Because in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope and an expected end. Not just an end, but an expected end. He wants us to live a life of abundance, shining his glory, because he's worthy. He's a good father, and that was the biggest revelation for me, that he's good. He's not the author of sickness, and it doesn't matter what you see going on around you. Just like Jesus spoke to the fig tree, and they were surprised when the fig tree was withered, but Jesus wasn't surprised when he spoke and I wasn't surprised just because I was wearing oxygen. I didn't believe that I was the sick praying for the sick. I was the healed praying for the sick. Because that's what the word says. That by his stripes we are healed. And if we are healed, then we is healed. So I just got into the word and my lung function had dropped to 18%. And... The doctors were concerned that I wouldn't even live long enough to get the transplant. But when I heard from God, see, I think it's really important to be led by the Spirit, not by what other people do because they got a surgery or they threw their medicine away. Just be led, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Be led by the Spirit. It's between you and God. This testimony is between me and God. It's, it's really intimate because he was there. He was still there. He's still here. And it was like going through a fire. I'm going to read you the scripture. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. That was the scripture that God gave me, and I literally walked through that valley of the shadow of death. And God gave me the grace to fear no evil. And I just speak that over you guys. God doesn't say don't try not to fear. He says fear not. And it's an empowerment to not fear. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and so I went on a vacation. Three days in my vacation, I got a call at 8 in the morning. And they said, we have, we have lungs for you. And I said, I'm going to call you back. I'm going to talk to God. I didn't tell her that, but that's what I was going to do because he's the great physician. He oversees all my care. And I just said, God, are these the ones? Because I got called five times over the last three years. I went in twice and some of the organs were damaged. I said no to one. But this time I felt like I'm going to go before you. I'm going to be in this. And... I just said, God, if I'm going to go through this, I want, to, I want you to get glory to yourself. 
because I'm your trophy. You knitted me in my mother's womb and I believe what you say about me. And so I said yes to the organs and we were just outside of Seattle and we began to drive there and I just began to worship God. <laughs> worship is so precious to me because it's not just singing and hype. It's, it's worshiping him and thanksgiving because you see with the eye of faith that, that you're going to be okay. <laughs> that he's the light in the darkness that we follow. And that he, I love this scripture. John 16, I, I would, <laughs> when I was in the hospital, I would just, I told them when I come out of the surgery, I just want to have the headphones on. I just want to listen to God's word, his, his music, and just about how I'm healed. And I just want God speaking in my ear. Because you'd have a breathing tube and you can't talk when you come out. But they said, is there anything we could do when you come out? And I said, I want the word going in. <laughs> so I had this scripture playing on repeat over and over all night long. And Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My perfect peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. I speak that over you. Jesus says that to you right now. And I'll share a couple of amazing um, he healing testimonies from the transplant, but for me personally, the biggest testimony was the peace that I experienced. I remember I was sharing Todd's testimony as I was getting wheeled into the surgery, and I was sharing my testimony with the anesthesiologist, how it was a miracle that I'm all alive, and the surgery, um, usually a lot of people get really afraid, but I was joyful, and God knows that. It's a key, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. So I went into that surgery, and they wheeled me into the, the cold operating room, and I just remember there's like 10 people, and they're all looking at you. You're the star of the show. And I just remember smiling and just, just blessing them, and just shining my light. And I remember as they, I just sensed God's glory in that operating room. That's exactly what we prayed, that God's glory would be there. And there was such a peace. And I just remember they put the, the freezing in my spine, and I just put my head down. And I woke up smiling, the surgeon said. The surgery for a double lung transplant is usually 6 to 11 hours long. But I was believing God, because faith is, can be in steps. For me, it has been. I was believing God for speedy recovery, supernatural, that God would get glory to himself through this. And this 11-hour surgery was only three hours long. <laughs> Praise you, Father. God literally guided the hands of the physicians, and even the main surgeon wasn't even there. But my husband said, who, do, who is our faith in, man or God? But God guided his hands, and the surgeon assistant said the surgery went perfect. Glory to God. And then the next part is recovering, that your body doesn't reject the new organs. Most people stay in ICU for days to months. But Jesus allowed me to have speedy recovery, and I was only in ICU for one day. <laughs> Praise you, Father. <laughs> Praise God. The breathing tube came out in record, record-breaking time. I think the one surgeon said, we had a guy that had his out, his breathing tube in like 12 hours. I think mine came out in like 10. And so I was able to, the first, this is so beautiful, because the Bible says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. As soon as they took that breathing tube out, this is what I said. <laughs> I'm so amazed at God's grace. I said, I declare that I will speak better than I spoke before. 
And I will live and not die and declare the works of God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Praise you, Father. So I came out of that declaring with these new lungs that I would declare the works of God. And I was saying that with oxygen in it, it just didn't change. It just, it's remained the same. My confession has remained the same. And um, another amazing thing that God did was um, you have chest tubes in and usually that's one of the most painful parts. But in Isaiah 53, it says that Jesus bore our pain. He carried our sorrows. By his stripes, we are healed. So I, I said, God, I can't take these narcotics. I just feel like I don't like them. So I believe, God, that Tylenols, that a Tylenol, two Tylenols would sustain me through a double lung transplant with four chest tubes in. And that's what I did. And I would even walk around the the little unit praying for people with four chest tubes with no pain. I wasn't being tough. I don't have a high pain tolerance, but it was Jesus because faith is in steps and it's not according to what God can do, but it's according to what we can believe him to do. Just like he can heal, raise the dead, but we need to believe that. That's why we've got to start praying for the dead, praying for the blind. So I'd walk around the unit and just pray for people. I remember a, a, a Buddhist family gave their heart to Jesus just because of the supernatural healing that God was doing. And um, I don't want to share all the testimonies, but, you know, many times that I've been in the hospital, I, I saw it as, okay, devil, I'm going to bring the kingdom. I'm going to be an ambassador for the kingdom of God. And I'm going to rub your nose in it because God is with me. He's for me. He's on my side. And he's in me. I remember one hospitalization. I was in the hospital for three weeks. That's when you guys were in Europe. And I think over 80 people were touched for Jesus. Everybody that came in my room heard that Jesus loved them. I'd pray for them. I think like 10 people gave their heart to Jesus. People got healed. Hallelujah. So it's, it's amazing because when you're in the hospital and you don't feel good, sometimes we get selfish and self-centered. But what I've been learning is that when we still love and we push against that resistance to be selfish, God's love starts flowing through you and it becomes joyful and you, then you have strength. So God knows what's best for us. He said, love one another and to let your light shine. You are salt and light. Jesus said to preach the word in and out of season. So even in the hospital, I w because the word was, I was brainwashed by the word, we were able to, to represent Jesus even in that hospital like, like an ambassador. So praise God. And also, when I got out of the double lung transplant, they said, if you're not in too much pain, try walking half a block. And I walked eight kilometers two weeks out of the hospital. So God, he is a miracle worker. And he, all things are possible to him that believes. Don't ever be ashamed if you feel led to get help because Natural doctors are just a natural helps ministry to God. Jesus is the great physician. He healed the spirit, the root of sickness. But if you feel led to get help, live and not die. That's my doctrine. <laughs> so praise God. And yeah, praise God. Hallelujah. I just wanted to share just like a couple testimonies in the hospital. Um, when I got called in to, to, to get the transplant, um, I, got, I got an air ambulance that picks you up and flies you out. And one of the air ambulance drivers, he said in his 40 years 
of service. He never met anyone like me because of Jesus in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. And he ended up, uh, God healed his back and he ended up giving his life to Jesus in that ambulance. (laughs) Praise God. And then I'm just sharing these testimonies to encourage you that even when we feel weak, God said, first of all, don't declare that over yourself. I declare I'm strong. I even said that with 18% lung function. But even when you feel weak and you feel at the bottom of your game, that's when God calls us to the top of our game. And so when, one time when I was in the hospital, like with, after the transplant, I had a mask on and I was in the elevator and this Muslim woman looked at me and she could tell that I was smiling underneath the mask. And she said, I could tell you're a thankful person. And I said, I am, I just had a double lung transplant. And I started to share my testimony with her. And she was so open. It actually amazed me. It still amazes me every time. I'm always beside myself how ripe the harvest is. Jesus said in John 4 that you know the saying, there's four months until harvest, but I say, look around. The harvest is already ripe. (laughs) So that was 2,000 years ago. So how much more ripe is the harvest now? So this woman, uh, I preached the gospel to her in this busy uh, hospital entrance, and, I, and she was so open. She asked me to pray for her son who had a mental illness, and not only just that, but she said, can you pray for this person, and can you pray for this person? She was so hungry, and it's not because I wore oxygen and people felt sorry for me why they let me pray. They let me pray because my motive was love, that's it. It's, it takes practice. I believe practice makes perfect. And, and you just step out uh, beyond the, the void of fear. And you just step out and you watch God show up. And I, I'm so amazed at the power of a seed. Like, it's, God's seed is so amazing. You don't need to have these spectacular encounters They will come, but just have a motive to love, and that's all I've ever really done. So this woman, I just shared the gospel with her, and she said a holy man told her that there would be a sign, and I told her, it is, it's Jesus Christ. She was from Iran, and I just, I asked her if she wanted to receive Jesus into her life, and she did. She was so open, and she gave her heart to Jesus right there in that busy hospital entrance, praise God. And the coolest thing of all, her name was Faith. Her name was Faith. And Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I love Faith because God is the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one that gives us the strength. It's it's all him. And so she gave her life to Jesus, and she wanted to, wanted to read her Bible. She got my number. And it was such a highlight testimony just because of how open she was. I think the devil lies and says, oh, that person's born again. You don't need to share with them. Or that person's Muslim. But every time we step out, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. When we step out, especially when we don't feel like it, It takes more faith in it. It so pleases our Father. I find the more the more intimidated I feel, the more God shows up because yeah. Because He's our strength. This what is that scripture where it says, not by my power, but by my spirit, by by God's spirit, his anointing. So yeah, it's so good. And um yeah, I, just, I was just thinking about Acts where it says that prayer. I just wanted to pray that over you. So, Father, I just pray like they prayed in the book of Acts, Lord, that you would grant us, your servants, boldness to proclaim that signs and wonders would be done in the name of your holy servant, Jesus. So, Father, I pray 
that every person here would not just be inspired, but inspired to action. They've already, you guys have been doing amazing, and I just, I just want to encourage you to keep doing it consistently, that Lord, you would just protect the fire in their hearts, all of us. Help us to be better witnesses, God. Help us to have compassion. Help us to see people the way you see them, Father. Help us to, to walk by faith and not by sight. And help us to not be jealous or, or competitive. But Father, help us to just stay in your love and just love people, Father. Thank you that everybody here is amazing. And that they are sowing into eternal souls. It's like the most valuable thing in the world. Help us to be more passionate, Father, for souls, God. Give us a heart for souls, Father. Help us to be so on fire that it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. Help, it, help us to, to shine your light and be so in love with you that we can't help but to share you. Let us be fools for you, God. Let us be unashamed of the gospel because it is the power. Thank you, God, that you will work with our words and confirm them with signs following today, God. And that we wouldn't go out for spectacular and overlook the supernatural, but that we would just look to love. And like the Bible says, snatch them from the flames of hell. Father, thank you for all the fruit in this place that will impact the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Okay, so, uh, is it on? Yes. H how long ago did you get your lungs? Uh, five months ago, about F five months ago. Five months ago. Brand new lungs five months ago. Praise God. And at the, at the, right before you got surgery, how was your lung capacity? Oh with, yeah. With your old lungs. My old lungs was at 18, and now it's at 88, and it's going to be 100. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. What's, what's like... What's in, I heard that your lung capacity is higher than your husband's right now. My oxygen level used to be at, without oxygen, it was at 79. Sorry. It's telling me to stop talking. Um, oh. And. I'm never having one of them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, yeah, so my, my oxygen used to be at 79. And Robert's is at 96. That's normal. Mine was at. Uh, wasn't it a hundred, Robert? A hundred percent. So God is making these lungs work as if I was born with them for his glory. That's what I believe. So. One of, one of the most amazing things, because I remember one day um, after you had the transplant, the medication was messing with your mind. Oh, yeah. And you called me. Yeah. And. How did that conversation go? Because I, I remember it very specifically because it was one of the highlights of my life. <laughs> it was like the hardest day of my life. Um, like even though I almost died when I was 12 and I've had surgeries and all these things, something, it was like my lung had collapsed and I hadn't slept for a week and I was on these narcotics and I literally felt like I was dying and I... I was so weak, <laughs> and, and Todd prayed for me, and he just, he didn't give me compat, like, like, he didn't give me sympathy or anything, but all that came out of him was the word, and that's what I needed. I was in a place where I couldn't even speak, I was so short of breath, and anxiety was coming, because I was panicking that I couldn't breathe. It was the hardest day of my life, and... And all Todd did was speak the word over me. Because the word is medicine to all of our flesh. And literally, um, a peace started coming over me. I was beginning to breathe easier. And they took me off the narcotics. They, they noticed my potassium and other things were low. And they started, I was just like, all I could say was help. <laughs> help, 
help God. He said to cry out to him in your time of need, and he'd hear us. And he sent help. He had people praying for me, all you guys on Facebook. And he, God sent forth his word, and he healed us. And you're speaking life to me. I couldn't even speak. And it, the next day, I was literally 180 degrees yeah. back to myself. Come on. Come on. <laughs> and I started just loving all my nurses. And it was, it was I, don't, I don't know how to explain it, but like, Todd is my faith buddy. <laughs> oh, forever. You know what I mean? And <laughs> it's... It's so easy to get busy, but when we take the time to speak the word over people and be there, it's, it, was, it ministered so much because God loves us and he'll send people in our life. And when we're weak, he's strong. And in my weakest moment, you were there. You were there when I was getting rolled into ICU, or I mean to the surgery. And, and you said, you prayed that the glory of God would be in that place. And it... Yeah. And as I was driving to get my transplant, I remember you said, are you excited? And just that word caused my faith to rise up because I wasn't excited yet. Amen. I had the word in me, but it needed to bubble out. And, I, and you said, God is just, he's in you too. Come on. And God's word is powerful. You know, spoken with love. A word in season is like honey. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. The right kind of honey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Love you. Amen. Love you. Love you. Love you. Would you guys stand and honor Lynn? Yeah.